Hi friends, I am Yakuta Karpanawala. Today we are going to see the chapter Arrays and Strings. So first we'll start with Arrays. What are Arrays? Arrays stores multiple data of same data type. Means it's a variables which can store large amount of data. It can be 10 values, 1000 values or less values, but all should be of same data type. That is, it can store 10 values of integer data type or 1000 values of float data type. It cannot store one value of integer and another value of float data type in the same array. There are basically two types of uh, arrays. One is single dimension arrays and another is multi dimension arrays. In multi dimension arrays, we can have two dimensions array, three dimensions arrays, four dimensions arrays and so on but we'll be concentrating on two dimensions arrays. What is single dimensions arrays is, in single dimensions arrays, the values are arranged either row wise or column wise. There is one single row to store different values of data. As you can see here, there are n values stored in a single dimension arrays. The first value is stored at zeroth index, the second at first index, and the last at n minus 1 index. While in case of two dimensions arrays, the values you can consider it as it is stored in a matrix format where you have rows and columns. So the row number starts with 0, 1 up to m minus 1, and the column number starts with 0, 1 up to n minus 1. This is an m cross n matrix. Two dimension array is in the form of a matrix one, while one dimension array is in a singular row or a single column wise. Let's see for arrays what are the steps or you can say how to create arrays in a C program. As I said basically there are two types of arrays. One is single dimension arrays and another is two dimension arrays. Okay, let's understand what are the steps for creating arrays. How you are going to store the values in an array in a C program. So we have two types of arrays. One is single dimensions arrays and another is two dimensions arrays. For both the types of arrays, there are two important steps that has to be compulsory been carried out. The first one is declaration and the second one is initialization. For single dimension arrays also we need to do there's two steps that is declaration and initialization and for two dimension arrays also we need to do two steps one is declarations and initialization declarations means will be informing informing the compiler what type of values and how many values we are going to store it in an array while initialization means that which values we are going to store in a, the array so Initialization again can be done in two ways. One is compile time and another is run time. Okay. So for one dimension arrays also the initialization can be done using compile time and run time. And for two dimension arrays also the initialization can be done by two methods. One is compile time and run time. So now we are going to see in detail how to declare initialize one dimension and two dimensions arrays and use it in our C program. Okay, so the first is we'll start with the single dimensions arrays. So as I said, there are two steps for creating single dimensions arrays. One is declaration and another is initialization. How we are going to declare a single dimension array? For that, we need to follow the syntax. So what is the syntax of single dimensions arrays? That is, first we need to have the data type. You can use any data type like integer, float, character, double, and so on. Then Array name. array name can be uh, any name which starts with a character or an underscore. You need to follow the rules of rules for naming a variable in case of array name. Then we need to have a square bracket and inside the square bracket we have to mention the size. This size will determine how many maximum values you want to store it in an array. You cannot exceed this size limit for storing the values in an array. So in short, you can say that array name is a variable which is going to store maximum this many size of particular data type of values. Say for example, if I have here integer a10, it means integer is my data type 
A is my array name and the size is 10. So I can store maximum 10 elements of integer data type. Let's see another example. It is float B15. It means that I can store maximum of 15 float values inside an array B. Now, after declaration of an array, how we are going to access the values of this array. For this, we will be using the concept of indexes. In arrays, the indexes always starts with the value 0 and the last index is size minus 1. Say for example, if I say that the array is A and the size is 10, then in that case, the 10 different values would be stored in an array starting with index 0. So the first value would be stored at A0, the index 0. The second value would be stored at A1. The third value would be stored at A index of 2. And the last value would be size minus 1. A size is 10. So 10 minus 1 is 9. So the last value would be stored at A of 9. After declarations, telling the compiler what type of value and how many values you are going to store at an array, we need to do, go for the second step that is initialization. Initialization, as I said, it can be done using two methods, either compile time method or runtime method. So let's see what is compile time initialization. Compile time is also known as static initialization and runtime is known as dynamic initialization. So let's see what is compile time initialization of an array. Initialization, initialization means we are going to store some values now in an array and these values will be using to perform some operation in our program. So for where storing values, what would be the syntax, data type, array name or variable, bracket size. This is the declaration of an array. With declaration, you have to store the values of the array also. So how far you are going to store the values is write equal sign and in braces store different values separated by com. So you can see here value 1 comma value 2 comma value n. Maximum how many values you can store size. It all depends upon the size. Let's see one example of initialization of one dimension arrays. Integer A5 means my data type is integer, array name is A and maximum how many values I can store in an array? 5. So size is 5 here. I want to store now values inside this particular array. So for that, I'll do compile time initialization. Write down equal and in braces you give some values which you want to store it in array. So here I will randomly given values like 4, 7, 1, 8, 2. So all these five values are stored in, in the array A. You can store less values also. Suppose if I store only 4, 7, 1, then the rest will be a garbage values. Now in this case, the first value that is 4 is stored in index 0. So A of 0 will be equal to 4. The second value 7 is stored at index 1. So A of 1 equal to 7. And the, the last value would be stored at, at index size minus 1, that is size is 5, so 5 minus 1 is 4, so the last value stored at A of 4 which is equal to 2. Let's see another example. Now instead of integer I am taking float data type, so float balance. Now when you are doing compile time initialization, it is possible that you can avoid mentioning size in the square bracket. So here you can see I have not mentioned any size, my bracket square bracket is empty. But this can this is possible only in compile time initialization. So whenever you are declaring the array, at the same time you initialize an array. So you write down equal to and in braces you write down the values. So here I mentioned the values as 1000.0 all float values, 2.0, 3.4, 7.0 and 50.0. Now in braces I have mentioned 5 values so the automatically the compiler will take the size is equal to 5. In this case, it depends how many values you are storing it in an array. Depending on that, the size will be fixed by your compiler. So the first value, as I said, will be stored at index of 0. Now this, the second value at 1 and the last index, value at index of 4. Each array elements are stored in an array 
each elements of an array is stores in memory now each memory has some memory address by which we can locate the value of the array say for example my starting address of the memory is 2000 since it's a float data type float data type the memory size is 4 bytes so the next value 2.0 or you can say the a of 1 will be stored at in the memory address 2004 Similarly, the rest, the third value would be stored at 2008 and so on. There would be a difference of memory address of 4 bytes because we are using float data type. If it is integer data type, then the memory address difference would be of 2 bytes. The first value would be of 2000, the second value would be of 2002 and so on. That was about compile time initialization. The next we'll be seeing how to do runtime initialization. Runtime initialization means whenever you are executing the program, at that time you are entering the values inside the array. This is the most oftenly and preferable method of initialization of an array. You should use compile time initialization when the values are fixed and you, you do not want to change those values anytime in the future. But most of the time, we want to test our program with different values in an array. So for that, runtime initialization is the best option. Let's see what is runtime initialization. The other name for runtime initialization is dynamic method of initialization. In case of runtime initialization, we'll be using the inbuilt function scanf, which is stored in stdio.h header file. Also, will be using loops in this case because we are not going to store one single element in an array but we are going to store multiple values inside an array so the process of initialization will be carried out again and again since we are going to repeat the task of inputting values in an array we'll be using loops this loops will be using on indexes as we know right that the array elements that sto are stored at different indexes, which starts with zero. So we'll be use we'll be using indexes on we'll use loop method on index of an array. Let's see how we are going to initialize a one dimension array using scanf. That is runtime initialization. As you so you can see here integer a50. It means a is my array which is going to store all integer value and the size of an array is 50 means I can store maximum 50 values if I want I can store less values inside this array also then I have two diff uh, more variables here one is i which will I'll be using for indexes and n means it will determine that how many values I want to store it in array my size is 50 but if I want I can store 10 values also or I can store 20 values and that this value 10 or 20 will be stored in my n. So first is printf, enter the size of an array and I'll use scanf to input the value inside the variable n. If n is equal to 5, if I'll input n is equal to 5 means I'm going to store 5 values inside my array. If n value is equal to 10, I'll be storing 10 values inside my array and so on. Now after this, I want to store my values inside an array. So printf enter values. As I said, I'll be taking loops on indexes. So for loop, the index in an array starts with zero. So i is equal to zero. How many total values I want to store? It depends on n. So my condition would be i less than n. It should not be equal to n because last value of my array would be stored at index minus 1. So either you can write i less than equal to n minus 1 or you can write i less than n. In the update part, I'll write i plus plus because every time I want to in increment my index by 1. Because the starting index would be 0, the next index would be 1 and so on. Inside my for loop, I'll use scanf percentage d because it's an integer array and comma m percent because I'm going to store the values at different addresses. So address of operator m percent. My array name is a and inside square bracket will write down i. This time we are not going to write 0, 1 or 2. We'll write down the variable i. i is the value of i depends on your for loop. So when i is equal to 0, 
the first value which I'll input will be stored at a of 0. Next time the value of i becomes 1 because of the update part. So the second value would be stored which I'll input using scanf will be stored at a of 1 and so on for the rest of the time. So this loop will be executed n times and for n, diff n different values will be stored during runtime inside the array a. Let's see what would be the output of this particular program. I've simply written the logic. We need to write everything, hash include, stdio.h, void main, and so on. So the first, so the output would be enter the size of array. Say the value of n I've entered is 5. Now I need to enter 5 values inside my array. How are you going to enter? So the next is printf enter values. So I'll get output enter values as my statement displayed onto the screen. Now the first value I'm entering is 3. So i is equal to 0. So 0, so at index 0, 3 value would be stored. So a of 0 would be equal to 3. Then enter the next value that is 8. 8 would be stored at a of 1. 4 will be stored at a of and so on. So you enter five different values and each five values will be stored inside the array. How it is going to store this? As I said, a of 0 is 3, a of 1 is 8, a of 2 is 4 and so on for the rest. So this was all about runtime initialization of single dimension array. How we have used scanf and loops using the combinations of loops and scanf we have inputted different values inside my arrays number of different values inside my array. Now the next is, this, so this was complete about single dimension arrays. For single dimension arrays, declare the arrays and then initialize the array using compile time and run time. Now we'll come to two dimensions arrays. As I said, two dimension arrays also there will be two steps. One is declaration and another is initialization. For declare initialization, two methods, compile time and run time. First, we'll start with the declaration of two dimensions array. What would be the syntax for declaration of two dimension array? Data type, integer, float, or an, a character, array name, and now in bracket, now we'll have two square brackets since it's a two dimension array. Si in one bracket, I'll write down size one, in another bracket, you, uh, write down size two. You can consider size 1 is the number of rows if you want to imagine with respect to matrix and size 2 means number of columns. The total elements that you can store in a two dimension array would be size 1 multiplied by size 2. Say for example, if I, if I declare a two dimension array as integer a two sizes when one square bracket, in one square bracket I have mentioned 3. In another square bracket, I mentioned 4. So the total maximum values I can store in a two-dimension array would be 3 into 4. That is 12 values can be stored in an array and each of integer data type. How this values? 12 different values would be stored. So for that, we have to imagine the single two-dimension arrays in the form of a matrix where we'll have number of rows. How many rows we'll have? Three. The first size is 3, so there will be 3 rows and the second size is 4, so the number of columns would be 4. E each row and column starts with 0 index. So the first element would be stored at x of 0, 0. It means 0th row and 0th column. The next element would be stored at x of 0, 1. The values will be storing row wise. So x, 0, 1 means x, 0, row and first column. The third value would be stored at x of 0, 2 and so on. The last value will be storing index size 1. The last value will be storing at index size minus 1 and size minus 2 for rows and column respectively. So, so at x of 2, 3, the last value of my two dimension array would be stored. So this was about declaration of a two dimension arrays where in this case we'll be using two square brackets and mentioning two different sizes. Now for initialization of a 
two dimension arrays we have two methods compile time and run time compile time is also known as static method of initialization and run time is known as dynamic method of initialization in compile time initialization we will adopt almost the same policy that we have done um, same method which will be we have done for single dimension arrays declare it and initialize all together in one step so i have the declaration in teacher c2 first size is 2 and the second size is 3 in square brackets means i am going to store integer value and maximum value that i can store is 2 into 3 6 how you are going to store the six values in compiled time initialization? Write down equal to and in braces mention six different integer values. So one comma three comma zero comma minus one comma five comma nine. When the enter random values, random integers, six values inside this array C. So I mentioned random six integer values inside the array C. Now or you can there is an another method of initialization. What was what is the problem with this method of initialization is 1, 3, 0, minus 1, 5, 9. Not easy to understand which values would be stored in the first row and which value would be stored in the second row. We have two rows here. So another better way of compile time initialization where where we have more clarity of the rows and the column values is the second method that is integer C. 2, 3 are the sizes equal to. Now we'll have braces. The first brace, which you can see in red, is the main brace. And inside that, we'll again have sub block braces. The first braces where I've entered 1, 3, 0 is for my row 1, comma, second braces sub block, that is minus 1, 5, 9 are stored in the second block of braces. So each sub block which is specified in using braces is specifies your different rows. The first sub block specify your first row, the second sub block specify your second row. Since there are two rows, we'll have two sub blocks. Inside each sub blocks, how many columns should be there? Three. So I'll enter three different values that is one three zero and minus one five nine in each sub block individually okay so this is compile time initialization next is runtime initialization of your two dimension array runtime is also known as dynamic method of initialization now for runtime initialization we'll be using the same concept which we have used in single dimension array that is we'll be using scanf for inputting the values inside the array and we'll use the concept of loops now in two dimension arrays, we are not going to use one loop, but we'll be using two loops. One loop would be for rows and another loop would be for columns. So let's see how we are going to initialize two dimension array in during runtime. In so first we'll declare the array, do the declaration part. First is integer a 10 10 means since there are two sizes, so it's a two dimension array. The name of my array is a and I'm going to store all all integer values inside this array. Then I'm going to take two indexes. One is i and another j again of integer data type. i would be for row and j would be for column. Then I'm taking two variables m and n. m will determine the size of this array row wise and n will determine the size of an array column wise. Though I have mentioned here 10, 10 means maximum 10 rows and 10 columns but if i want i can reduce when i want to initialize this array i can reduce it to 2 3 or 5 6 and so on right but i cannot exit the row size by 10 and i cannot exit the column size by 10. so m and n will determine the size of the row and the size of the column so first input using scanf input the values inside here m and n then we'll be taking two for loop, one for row, and for each row we'll have different columns. So we'll use the concept of nested for loop. So for i equal to zero, i less than m, m is for the maximum size of the row, maximum row size of an array, i plus plus. Increment each and every indexes by one. The indexes should start with zero. Inside this for loop of i, I'll have a for loop of j that is column. So again, start j also equal to 0, indexes starts with 0. The condition would be j less than n, mean 
there will be maximum n columns inside this uh, this particular loop will be executed for n times that is n columns size and j plus plus the column indexes should also be incremented by one now inside my second for loop i'll be using scanf percentage d because it's an integer array m percent a a is the name of an array and now it's a two dimension array so there will be two square brackets so in one square bracket mention the index of row that is i and the second square bracket mention the index of column which is j so this loop will be executed m into n times and for each time the value values would be stored at different indexes of a two dimension array let's understand with a example suppose if i have a two dimension array integer a 2 3 so 2 is the number of rows and 3 is the number of columns say the base address or you can say the starting address of my two dimension array is 2000 so what would be the memory layout how your two dimension array is going to get stored inside your memory so let's see the, the indexes all the values of the arrays are stored row wise so the index would be the first row is for index wise the second row is for the values which we are going to store in an array and the third row is the memory address so the first value would be stored at index 0 0 a of a of 0 0 the value stored is 1 and the memory address is the starting or the base address is 2000 since it is stored row wise so the second value is at a of 0 1 the value is 3 and the memory address is 2002 because of integer data type integer occupies 2 bytes of memory third value would be a of 0 2 the value is 0 and the address is 2004 and so on for the rest of the other elements of the array so this is your memory layout of an array you should understand how a two dimension array is stored in a memory this was all about one dimension and two dimensions arrays how to create one and two df arrays the main steps are declaration initialization and in initialization two different step one is compile time and run time thank you goodbye